So, very welcome everybody to this fourth and last webinar of the STEM course. Today we'll be uh, having a live presentation on stereotypes by our expert Barbara De Micheli from Fondazione Giacomo Brodolini. Can you, uh, can you see me very well and uh, hear me? Hello. Uh, uh, Barbara, can you hear me? I just would like to confirm that before continuing. I can hear you. Okay, Hi. That's perfect because uh, I have a, a video problem, I think. Um, so, you know me by now. I am Gabriela Collado, coordinator of the STEM course and pedagogical advisor here at European Schoolnet in Brussels, and I'll be moderating this session. Please note that your microphones are muted. Uh, you know that because the microphone icon next to your name is red. And I would like to ask you to keep your microphones uh, like that muted uh, to make sure I will be hearing Barbara very clearly. So to introduce our guest, I would like to say that uh, Barbara is based in Rome, in Italy. She's a senior project manager in Fondazione uh, Giacomo Brodolini, which is a center of cultural development that deals with uh, gender issues, but also with immigration, population aging, and other topics. For the last three years, Barbara has been coordinating a Master in Gender Equality and Diversity Management, and she's also in the coordination team of the Genislab project. In this session, Barbara will be telling us more about stereotypes, and in particular, more about stereotypes in the STEM area. She will also be presenting some research results from the Genislab project on this topic. Uh, to remind you, the Genislab project aims to improve to ask your questions the presentation. Thanks uh, to the way we uh, know and uh, uh, make our ideas of the world around us. Uh, then I will talk about uh, uh, gender stereotypes. I will talk about uh, stereotypes in science and the uh, relation uh, that exists between uh, gender stereotypes and science. And then I will also show you some uh, results uh, that come from the Genislab uh, project and our idea that uh, in a way uh, there is the need to make a cultural change and to make, uh, uh, give a different idea, propose uh, uh, different stereotypes or different uh, role models. So, um, I will try to uh, share some uh, um, some slides I've prepared for you. I hope it works. It doesn't look like Gabriella. Mm -hmm. Well, Gabriella. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I wanted to share my, my desktop, yes. but no, I no. think I no, can. can do it. Now I can do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you the presenter, you can do it. Okay. Okay, here it is, okay, okay, good. So, well, I decided to start uh, with the uh, uh, stereotypes uh, not necessarily related to gender, but related, for instance, to the idea that each one of us has of different uh, nationalities or of people coming from different countries. Uh, this is a picture that circulates quite a lot on the internet, and what it comes from is that uh, uh, from the very different characteristics of people all around the world, uh, the stereotypes uh, takes one and makes these characteristics as the predominant characteristic of uh, that country or people living in that country. So, for instance, Italians are known uh, uh, because they wear uh, sunglasses or because they have good food or because they are lazy or... But the thing is that uh, independently on the fact that the characteristic is um, a positive or a negative one, what happens with stereotypes is that uh, the richness of the personality, the individuality or the culture of a country is reduced to one, just one single line. So, uh, people are labeled and they uh, are perceived as if they were only the characteristic that is uh, chosen to label them. 
of course, is a, is a oversimplified generalization, and uh, but in some cases is necessary because, of course, if you think about children and if you think about how many things they have to understand and know and learn when they are very small to be able to move in the, in the world they have around, uh, simplification and the stereotypes might be useful. And this is the reason why we do have uh, all, we all have stereotypes. I invite you, if you have time, to take the YAT test uh, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where you can easily see which kind of stereotypes uh, you have. So we all have stereotypes, but the important thing is that uh, we recognize stereotypes of such and we uh, acquire the possibility to deal with them. Um, so this is another typical of stereotypes belonging to the 50s. Uh, so women can only do some things, men can do other things because they are naturally and stereotypically belonging to different uh, uh, roles. Um, as I told you, stereotypes are necessary in the sense that they are useful for us to build the cognitive maps. And normally, in our process of uh, acquiring knowledge, they are associated with positive or negative experiences. Uh, so stereotypes happen at different level, at social level, when we deal with other people, with families, with groups. At cultural level, we find stereotypes in arts and literature, in the media, a lot in advertising at political level, but also in the organizational level. And of course, in all the different environments in which we deal, so at the workplace, in the media, in the advertising industry. Um, I put this picture because when we see this picture of these women, we immediately have some ideas about them without uh, knowing who they are, without knowing anything about the individuals, but uh, our background immediately associates to these pictures uh, some stereotypes idea. And the thing is that when we apply stereotypes uh, to a social group, immediately what we do is that we uh, limit uh, the possibility of people belonging to the group to have uh, all the other opportunities that, people, that other people have or other groups have in the society. So it is very important to recognize that we have this kind of stereotypes to be able to deal with uh, individualities and single characteristics. Um, if this is true in general, when we talk about stereotypes, gender stereotypes are very specific ones uh, because uh, first of all, they are common in almost all cultures and they are among the very first stereotypes that humans uh, develop, starting from the age of two. Uh, children in schools uh, learn <laughs> that there are things that girls should do and boys should not. Uh, things are changing, but still what they, are, what they recognize, uh, what, they be, what they are told to is that these strong differences exist, which is not too bad, uh, unless if you think that this means that some things are possible for girls and some things are possible for boys and there is a limit to op opportunities for all. Uh, gender stereotypes are also non-conscious and automatic. And uh, the other things that characterize uh, gender stereotypes is that they are descriptive but at the same time highly prescriptive. So they say what a girl or a boy should do or should not do to be a boy or a girl. So they produce and they are produced by gender roles in society. And these roles are the interface between individuals and organization. And the other thing that characterizes gender stereotypes while it's not common to other kind of stereotypes, is that they are complementary. So um, men and, and women are seen as uh, the two halves of an apple or of an orange. So men are what women are not, and women are what we, where men are not. So there, there is this level of complementarity which is not common to other kinds of stereotypes. Um, then, before making a first stop, I made a selection of different uh, sayings, way of saying, that are 
coming from different countries, but uh, I think that uh, you can easily find a translation or something similar to in your own country, which is uh, the fact that normally beauty is associated with women, but uh, that intelligence not. So God did not join brains with beauty. Uh, or uh, uh, and you find different way of saying it in different countries, but the concept is always the same. And uh, the last one, uh, man is very clear of this concept where you say man has beauty in his excellence, uh, woman excellence in her beauty. So that uh, there is this kind of different roles and competences that to to um, to the different gender of the world. And uh, the pictures you find on the right are of a, a game, a card game, uh, in which uh, which is used to play with the, with the children in schools and to present a different uh, vision on gender the roles. Um, I don't know, Gabriela, if you want to make a first pose for questions or comments. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, so, do you have any questions so far for Barbara? If you want to ask a question, you can either use your microphone or the chat box. If you want to use your microphone, just you have just to uh, please unmute your microphone so the icon will turn in gray instead of red. And you can also turn on your camera, which is an icon next to the microphone. Um, otherwise, you can use the chat box. So you go to chat uh, and make sure please to write to everyone. So let's see if there is a question. Uh, here, there in the chat. Somebody would like to make a question? Mm. Uh, well, maybe we can continue, Barbara, if you don't mind, and uh, we, we can make a stop later on. I hear you very um okay. Do do you hear me? I hear you perfectly, yeah. So okay. we're saying okay. if you don't mind, yeah, we can continue and make a stop later. Okay, okay good. Good. Um so um when it comes to gender stereotypes and science, what happens is that uh, uh the idea is that uh, at least for many years has been that uh, women and science uh, were two different things. Uh, on one side, science has its own stereotypes. Uh, the, the first, uh, which is uh, quite evident, but at the same time uh, quite uh, unrevealed, is that uh, science is presented as neutral, while uh, science neutral is not, in the sense that uh, in many uh, fields, of the STEM when it comes to tests, uh, pilot tests, uh, or first studies, the tested on groups in animals, for instance. Um, in the new gender summit, there were a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, have on the fact that uh, only in the last years uh, there is an attempt to introduce uh, what they uh, medicine or biomedical. And in the last to uh, but also to the fact that, for instance, uh, the perception that vote for uh, average and not for an average women in cases did not take into consideration the consequences that some could have on female body, which has uh, uh, obviously differences. And uh, um, so, uh, um, science neutral, 
plant control, but we go to see what uh, is actually include. You see the lot of the indicators area. Sorry, on, uh, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt in this moment. Apparently, we have uh, some some uh, participants uh, have a problem of sound. Maybe you would like to repeat the last uh, part you said. You, you explained just a moment ago. Yes, saying that uh, uh, only in the last uh, only in the last years there is an attention to the gender dimension of research uh, and specifically the fact that. Uh, um, gender is uh, very important uh, also in the definition of the biomedical research uh, or in medicines and in the also, for instance, in the definition of the um, in definition of the prescription of the medicaments, because uh, what the doctors used to consider uh, normal uh, for an adult actually was normal for a man and not for a woman. And uh, a lot of medicaments did not consider the interactions that were existing uh, with the female bodies, which are of course different uh, because of different reasons. So, um, the, there is the fact that uh, science is presented as neutral while neutral is not, and also the fact that science is presented as uh, the kingdom of rationality, and women are stereotypically described as emotional, and so not having uh, the, the right uh, mindset uh, to uh, apply in STEM. And, and this is one of the reasons why, uh, because of this presentation of STEM, a lot of women are not uh, attracted to, well, they not feel that STEM belongs to them and they can give their contribution in it. And uh, uh, we made, as Fondazione, together with other partners, uh, a study that was concluded in 2012 on the uh, a meta analysis study. Uh, and this uh, and this uh, meta-analysis study uh, shown, uh, taking into consideration different researchers all over the world, that uh, stereotypes in science reinforce gender stereotypes and vice versa. And so this is the reason why traditionally there is this uh, uh, separation between women and science. And uh, another important uh, stereotype um, uh, that goes around science is that science uh, is uh, only for genius, that you need to be a genius to be a scientist, and so a sort of uh, uh, extraordinary person. So it has to do with uh, self-confidence, which traditionally is an issue for women. And at the same time, that science uh, needs uh, dedication completely, dedication to science, which means that it's not uh, um, possible to be a scientist and at the same time to have uh, uh, care uh, responsibility, uh, knowing that uh, responsibility concerning care, which means children, but also family, elderly people and whatever, traditionally belongs uh, to the stereotyped idea that uh, a role that women have in society. So putting together to this, these two stereotypes that to be a scientist you have to dedicate all your time to science and that women normally have uh, care responsibilities creates the condition why uh, the two uh, hardly go together. And uh, again, um, so you find on this slide that it is a selection of these stereotypes. And another, uh, another issue concerns the fact that uh, science is perceived, or at least a, a scientific career, is perceived to be very competitive, and women are seen as more collaborative and less competitive. And then the last issue that came out also from the Janice Lab uh, um, research is that uh, excellence is evaluated uh, against uh, some international criteria, including uh, your uh, number of publications. And, and women tend to, pu to publish less on one side because uh, uh, they take uh, more time, they're more uh, careful on what they publish, so it's very rare that the publication is contested while it happens uh, more often for, for men. 
but also because uh, they dedicate some of their time during their life career to care, and this uh, takes them uh, out, uh, reduces the time that they can spend uh, to invest in publication. So if the evaluation is made on the number of publications within a certain time, of course women are disadvantaged when it comes to their 25, 40 years, uh, which means the years of, uh, of fertility in which they could have children and they could uh, dedicate some time to that. Um, one of the results of these uh, double stereotypes was that for a long time, uh, women that had success in, uh, in science, uh, they, uh, they, they choose or they were forced to uh, identify with masculine role models. So that uh, they um, they decided to be, uh, or or they find out that the only way to uh, have a career in science was to adopt the same uh, role models as, as their uh, men colleagues, and um, and this is what actually we found out in Jenny's lab. Uh, in Genis Lab, we are working with six uh, scientific organizations in six different countries. Countries are Italy, Spain, Slovenia, Germany, Sweden, and uh, uh, Serbia. And so countries which are very different because you have Northern Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, uh, Central Europe. Uh, uh, and in all these countries, um, um, we found out that uh, gender stereotypes uh, are embedded in the national culture and that these stereotypes can vary from the different contexts, but that they all exist and they all have an influence uh, on women's career in science. And uh, uh, the most uh, stereotypes are related to the conflict between maternity and scientific work, and also uh, the fact that uh, uh, women are perceived as uh, less uh, willing to invest in their scientific career. In some countries, we also identified a lack of uh, a recognition of women as leaders, so uh, the stereotypes that not in all of the countries I was mentioning, but uh, mainly in the Southern Europe countries, the fact that women are not perceived as leaders, leadership skills are not recognized to women. And in addition, since uh, the role of senior scientists is uh, changing, now they, uh, senior researchers are not only asked to coordinate researchers, but also to find the money to fund their research. Women are also recognized as having less political skills and less networking uh, that could be useful for, uh, for, um, for getting found or getting introduced uh, in the right context. Um, but the good news is that uh, science uh, is changing, that uh, in a lot of uh, disciplines uh, there is a need uh, of a different way of thinking science, so there is a need of having an holistic and interdisciplinary view, which is uh, considered a characteristic of women, the capacity to to move uh, between different uh, skills and competences and that there is a need for having an attitude of responsibility with society. You might know that the new uh, umbrella concept that the Commission is spreading in Horizon 2020 is uh, responsible research innovation, which means that uh, innovation and research should be linked with the responsibility to ethics, uh, environment and society. And normally women are considered as more open to these new concepts. And uh, um, that uh, in the new science, uh, uh, skills as intuition, imagination are, uh, are seen as potentialities for innovation. And so uh, the idea in Janice Lab and also in some of the activity the Commission is spreading out is to bring role models to present uh, women of success uh, in STEM to present uh, all the, pot the potentialities that STEM could have uh, in terms of uh, careers and works, and also to um, invest in focusing 
on the fact that gender stereotypes exist and that they can limit the possibility for women talent to work and to express their contribution for the uh, development in, in society. Um, I don't know if there is any comment or any question or others. Uh, yes, before you go ahead, um, I would like to know if you have any particular suggestion to teachers uh, on how to deal with uh, gender stereotypes and stereotypes in the STEM area in the classroom. Because as, um, all, most of participants of this webinar are teachers uh, in STEM, so it would be nice to know your opinion on this. Yes, well, uh, there, is, there have been some interesting projects uh, uh, that have been implemented in the framework of the seven framework program, like for instance the twist in which you have a, gu a guidelines for teachers. Uh, but uh, the main, uh, I, I was involved in some uh, expert groups uh, at the European Commission working on uh, uh, defining tools or suggestions for teachers and the main uh, suggestions that came out were um, to take, to, to be aware that uh, stereotypes do exist and to uh, present uh, uh, cases or examples uh, uh, when you talk about your uh, area of competence in a classroom that could be near to the, the, the daily life of girls and boys. So make examples that could uh, include either boys and girls. And at the same time to invite, if you can, um, people that work, uh, that have interesting jobs because of their STEM studies. So not necessarily um, the genius uh, of the laboratory, but also um, someone that works in ICT or somewhere, someone that works uh, in innovations, explaining and taking care of uh, bringing to the classroom either women and men to give the idea that, uh, uh, that uh, of course, these are opportunities for women and men. And also, uh, uh, open a, a debate on the on gender and stereotypes in science um, taking uh, I mean committing into debate both girls and boys because one of the issues to avoid is to consider that uh, uh, analyzing gender stereotypes or debating on gender stereotypes is something that uh, is important only for girls. If we want to make a, a, a cultural change, this reflection should be made with all the people in the classroom and uh, uh, both boys and girls should, be, should consider that the STEM uh, are important to understand a lot of the aspects of their life, uh, including uh, what happens when you cook, uh, what happens uh, uh, when you produce uh, cosmetics, but also what happens when you, uh, why planes fly, or you know, these kind of things that uh, link them to real life and give the evidence of the importance of it. I was just wondering if uh, there would be any possibility for interested teachers uh, to arrange a live session for their students, uh, for his her students, with you or with uh, any of your colleagues at Fundazione, because I, I think this is very important to be shared with uh, students also. Huh? Why not? I mean, we have, uh, well, I already invited you to the conference in Dresden, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would be interesting. Um, another thing that you could do, maybe you know, there is a campaign that was launched by the Commission, which is called the Science is a Girl Thing. And on the website of the campaign, you find a lot of uh, tools, uh, video, or also um, materials that you could uh, ask for free to the Commission and that you could use in your classroom. And, um, and some of the videos are very interesting uh, and most of it, the thing that was interesting uh, two years ago when the campaign was launched, there was also a contest asking uh, girls and boys in classrooms all over Europe to produce some videos on what they consider stereotypes and that videos produced by the, 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 the youngsters, they were very, very interesting. So one possibility could also be to, 
to ask. Well, it, it, of course, it depends on the age of the of the of your uh, of the people you are teaching to. But for instance, uh, there was uh, in the last EU summit, EU gender summit, there was a presentation of uh, researchers that made a test in a in a primary school, asking boys and girls to draw a scientist, a man scientist, and a women scientist. And it was very interesting then to open a debate on the picture that came out. So the kind of stereotypes that uh, children uh, already have about uh, what is a scientist uh, and which characteristics uh, a scientist has. Thank you very much, Barbara, for your for your answer. Sorry, um, I would like also to hear a bit uh, about the master in gender and diversity management uh, you uh, you coordinate. Could you please tell us a bit about it? Uh, in the last session we had in uh, May this year, you mentioned that there was going to be uh, such a master here in Brussels in in English. So if you have an update to give us, it will be great. Well, um, we are trying. For the time being, the master is in Italian, is in Rome, as it has a weekend formula, which is, means that people uh, attend one weekend uh, per month. And the formula is uh, uh, the weekend is made by Friday afternoon and uh, Sunday and Saturday all day. We have uh, a teacher from at university level, then a person coming from organization, which could be a company or a public organization, and then four hours of uh, project work uh, with the idea of planning and designing a project. And the content is, uh, of course, gender equality from a legal perspective and historical perspective, but also diversity, including uh, cross-cultural identities, uh, disabilities, aging, uh, interreligious issues, uh, uh, and uh, the idea of the master came from the fact that uh, Fondazione has a lot of uh, research ongoing, and we wanted to share with the wider public uh, the findings of the researchers and also to train a group of people that could then uh, implement uh, design and implement projects, uh, so gender equality plans uh, or structural change uh, towards diversity plans uh, in organization. Uh, so for the time being, the fourth edition will be in Rome starting at the end of November. Uh, but uh, um, yes, in May we thought we were going to organize a week in Brussels. Uh, we are a bit late on that, uh, but I think we will be able to make uh, a week, uh, a learning week on gender equality and diversity management at the beginning of, uh, of January. And if anyone is interested, you can have my email and send me an email and I will uh, send you update uh, information about that. Thank you very much. We will post that on the forum so everybody okay. will see it. Okay. Um, I uh, was wondering if there is already somebody who would like to ask a question. Who is uh, uh, willing to use the microphone maybe on the camera so we can uh, we can see each other? Uh, I was just I would like to read a comment from Irina Vasileu. Uh, she said that well before that you were giving examples. Um, she said what well, the standard symptoms of a heart attack are considered to uh, be those in men while w uh, women react differently, no? Yeah, you're, you're perfectly right. That was one of the issues. Um, we, Fondazione Brudolini, is also the editor of a magazine called In Genere, uh, which is in Italian and in English. And we made, uh, uh, so it, it's a magazine, it publishes articles on uh, gender-related issues, mainly from an economic point of view, so uh, changes in labor market from a gender perspective, but also on some specific issues. And we made a special issue uh, one year ago on what is called gender medicine, and there was this review uh, on, for instance, uh, uh, symptoms of heartache or other issues, or, or on the contrary, for instance, some uh, some uh, uh, disease which are considered to be only male or only female disease, but that actually exists, and that could, depression also, yes, a lot of uh, symptoms that um, are not treated ex uh, correctly because they are different uh, to according to gender, yes. 
And uh, if you see, uh, well, one of the reasons, uh, uh, um, so one thing is now in Horizon 2020, if you if you read, uh, Horizon 2020 is this big program that the Commission, uh, through which the Commission funds research and development in Europe. And they introduced this concept of uh, uh, the gender perspective in research. And they said that uh, there will be an evaluation that uh, the initiatives presented focus also on gender perspective, which means that gender should be uh, included in the definition of the research. And of course, all the steps of the implementation of the research should consider the gender aspect. What uh, people say is that uh, uh, taking into account gender is, uh, might be difficult or might complicate because, uh, for instance, if you think about uh, uh, tests uh, with, uh, with rats or other animals, uh, um, females have a very short period and period has a consequence uh, because of the change in hormones uh, on the effect of the test. So it's very costly to, cons to uh, use male and female rats in a laboratory. So they prefer just to use uh, uh, male and not to consider which are the, the consequences on, on female. So, yeah. Incredible, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there any other question for Barbara? Uh, otherwise, I would uh, would ask you to continue with your presentation, if that's okay for you. Okay. Well, I have just um, just a few things left, which are some uh, some tools or some documents that you could have a look at if you want to uh, go in depth. One is a study that has been by made by the AG, which is the European Institute on Gender Equality, based in Vilnius. And they made this study on the effects. Uh, uh, well, the study is on um, uh, narratives on gender perception. And uh, so how gender related issues are perceived in the 27 countries. And uh, you also have uh, effects of the stereotypes. You, you, you can have a look uh, and you can find your country and you can use it if you think it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, well, then, uh, when I prepared this presentation in May, for our session in May, there was this article on The Economist on uh, um, how uh, toy producers, as for instance Mattel, which is the producer for, uh, um, for Barbie, and I think we all know Barbie, how they play on uh, parents' expectations and stereotypes and how the price of the Barbie doll is dependent on the professional role the Barbie has. So for instance, uh, Barbie, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a kind of joke, but it's interesting, no? It says that uh, um, Barbies, uh, which represent uh, uh, careers uh, that are uh, uh, considered to be more desirable for parents, uh, cost more because they think that um, when they sell it, the parents will buy that kind of doll to bring the possibility to their children to become that kind of activity. So a Barbie snowboarder costs uh, more than a Barbie nurse, for instance, and you can have a look and, and play with that. And then, well, this is the website of the Genes Lab and you can find uh, some information on that including a paper written by Gabriel, by um, Flavia Zucco and Francesca Molfino on stereotypes and resistance in the organization, cultural resistance on stereotypes. And well, this is in general, I think we already talked about that. And this is the website of the Fundazione where you can have a look on, on all the projects that we have been working on. I already uh, wrote the URLs uh, on the chat box, so you can have a look there. And um, I don't know if there is uh, somebody who would like to ask a question for Barbara. It's still, uh, we're still in a good time, so please go ahead. Don't be afraid. I'll uh, unmute your microphone and uh, or, or write us uh, in the chat box. Uh, we have uh, Ivina uh, who would like to ask something. Uh, she says, as far as I understand, 
that as teachers we can help students to uh, be aware of stereotypes, but considering the deep of the phenomenon, uh, will that take any? Will that make any difference? Uh, well, I think it will, <laughs> in the sense that presenting uh, opportunities, uh, uh, it's um, it's very important for children. And um, and also uh, telling stories in which the, the the main character is a man or a woman for unconventional roles can open opportunities. Uh, to make an example, yesterday evening in the in the emission in uh, in Italy, there was a, a reportage on a woman which is captain of a, of. A, on the ship, which is uh, actively working in rescuing the migrants coming from North Africa. And this is a crucial role now in this moment because she is the captain of a ship and she leads around 30 men. And she is a woman. And she was uh, telling uh, how she copes with the, with the role, how she deals with the team. And for me, that I was looking at the mission, I thought, well, if I saw this 30 years ago, I could have thought this as a possibility. I'm not saying I would have become a captain of a boat. I, I don't know. But uh, this kind of possibility, uh, if I saw it 30 years ago, I could have thought about that. So if you give them the possibility to think that uh, independently on the fact that they are boys or girls, they could have uh, different careers, I think that you are making a big job, of course with your group, but then they will do it with the others and, you know, you start to change <laughs> from your little step, you start to change society. Thank you very much, Barbara. Here we have a message also from Maria uh, saying that, that the presentation, your presentation has been very clear and she sends your com her compliments to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I can tell you that uh, only, I don't know if you use LinkedIn, but we have a group called the Gender Equality and Diversity Management, which is the group of the master of people that are interested in the issue. And it's um, partly in, Italy, in Italian and partly in English. We use both the languages. So if you are interested, you can join the group and maybe we keep in contact. Uh, uh, we normally post uh, articles from all over the world dealing with, the, with gender, with the diversity. Thank you very much. Maybe you can... Uh... Uh, right uh, in in the form a link or something. Well, you, you have remember? to be in the LinkedIn because yeah, yeah. otherwise you cannot join. And then the group is called Gender Equality and Diversity Management. Okay. So like the master. Like the master, perfect. Good. Yeah. Thank you. So we are uh, arriving to the end of the session. Uh, so I would propose to try to summarize uh, just the main ideas uh, of what uh, Barbara has told us today. Uh, she started by explaining that stereotypes are a rigid impression we tend to build that result on an oversimplified generalization. Uh, stereotypes are also powerful as they influence the attitude of people, people sorry. and uh, unfortunately there is a clear link between stereotyping and social inequalities. But well, God thanks, uh, these levels we create can also have positive impacts, uh, gender stereotypes are not, I think, particularly the case. Uh, um, and, uh, well, gender stereotypes are, uh, are one of the first stereotypes developed by humans, so they are very um, unconscious, I would say, and they also reinforce stereotypes related to the role of men and women in science, and vice versa, of course. Uh, but the good news, as you told us before, I'm very happy to hear that, <laughs> is that this is changing. Uh, so gender diversity in science is uh, starting to be seen as a success factor for innovation, creativity, and scientific quality, which is um, very good. So I don't know if you would like to add something else to the summary, Barbara? No, it's, it's perfect. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and well, of course, we are talking about cultural change. So I think that what we could uh, also underline is that um, uh, the fact that now we see a lot of uh, cultural resistances is because we the, we are in a process of change, and uh, this kind of change uh, are not uh, are costly. So the resistances show that the change is going on. 
So we have to keep uh, the point. <laughs> we don't have to rest on this. We have to keep uh, proposing new models and saying that uh, opportunities are for all and that uh, women in science are a contribution, an important contribution for society. Thank you very much. So if you want to know more, do not hesitate. Check uh, Jenny's lab website. Uh, and have a look to also to the optional materials of Module 8, where you'll find complementary information on this topic, um, like the engineering newsletter and other websites, very interesting, and uh, some videos you'll see. Uh, so once more, thank you very much, Barbara, for this session on such thank a controversial you. topic. It has been a, a very interesting presentation indeed. Thank you, thank you. And uh, before closing the session, I would like to wish all of you all the best in your daily work with your students and to thank you for having joined the Innovative Practices for Engaging STEM teaching course. We'll soon send you an email with the link to uh, the evaluation survey of the course. So please uh, do tell us how did you like it and uh, what you would like us to improve. Uh, please remember also that the deadline for completing the quizzes uh, that will allow you to obtain the digital certificate is uh, Sunday 19th, 1-9, October at midnight. So I wish you a good evening, Barbara, and uh, thanks to all of you for having joined us today. All the best and goodbye. Goodbye.